Hey everybody, Hamza Kramza here, and today I'll be showing you the first in a series of infamous builds, the Noboru Villager in Tower Rush. This incredibly annoying build has been used effectively by a Japanese player named Noboru to take games off of opponents with much higher ELA than himself by using the Incan Villager Blacksmith bonus. And today we'll be breaking it down and showing you how to do it yourself. So, I hope you enjoy. I hate this strategy. I hate playing it, I hate playing against it, and overall, I'm just not a fan, which is why I decided to include it in an entirely separate series from the normal build orders and label it as infamous. Mostly, I made this series to learn the builds myself so that I can learn how to play against it and just perform better on the ranked ladder. With that being said, the idea of the Incan Villager Rush is to use your Civ bonus of Blacksmith Upgrades Effect Villagers to its fullest and force fights with your opponents with, you guessed it, your Villagers. What seems like a very meh bonus at first is actually an incredibly deadly early game boost. Villagers normally start with plus 3 attack and plus 1 armor, assuming you have loom. This means that normally villagers do around 2 damage to one another. With upgrades however, Incan villagers reduce that 2 damage by 50% to 1 and do 33% more damage with their forging upgrade, making them very, very deadly. As an example, a villager with both the forging upgrade and the scale mail armor upgrade can go one on one with a standard villager and completely annihilate them, only losing around 13 HP. In 2v1 situations, an Incan villager is almost worth two villagers in a fight, with the standard villagers winning with only one HP left. So in short, the idea of this build is to get to feudal, get your blacksmith upgrades, a wheelbarrow, and force messy, messy fights with your opponents in villager brawls. The only thing left to do is show you how. So let's go get it. All right, so let's get started. We're going to build our houses right off the bat and queue up our three or four villagers inside of the town center there. And we're gonna do some sheep scouting. So um, this is gonna be a similar commentary um, to, uh, you know, just like not play by play per se, but um, more just kind of talking to some of the finer points that are going on. Um, as I have in a previous video and you guys seem to like that so I'll try and keep doing that instead of you know just recording this and you know speaking while it's happening but rather just you know talk after the recording. Um, one thing I'll say about this build is uh, you definitely just become a worse human being so I would say that you know after uh, tower rushing and cheesing and doing all of this um, I think I started to resign games later um, and just felt overall more BM um, on the daily. So yeah, I wouldn't say play this build too much, but uh, <laughs> Yeah, it just kind of just kind of affects a, affects you in a certain way um, That being said, we're gonna send our eight and nine population over to the wood line and We're actually only gonna send two over to wood for the entire uh, first half of this build and This is like one of those things that's pretty interesting about the build in general uh, Because we only have or because we only have to build two houses right off the bat and Incan houses actually hold 10 population instead of the uh, original five, we can actually save some wood there. And we're also not, you know, going to build a barracks or, uh, you know, any other type of military building. So the only thing we need wood for is gonna be a mill and a blacksmith. So with the 10th villager, we're lowering that boar just like we are there. And after we found both of our boars and um, we found all of our sheep, we're gonna go immediately and go and scout the enemy. We're going to take the 11th population as well as the 12th population and put them onto boar. And we almost had a villager die there. But um, we're going to put them onto boar. And for the 13th population, we're actually going to send them all the way over to our berries there. And we're pretty much going to put the next, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, next four villagers onto our berries. So uh, as we're scouting here, uh, we have a, um, you know, an Amezo uh, Eagle Warrior. So really, you know, if you're really going to embody the uh, true spirit of, you know, being an Incan cheeser and, you know, cheesing in general, um, you can try and lame. But uh, like I said, I, I don't really support, um, you know, doing this build so much. I, I kind of just want to show you guys this build to show you how to play against it, but um, at some point it's entirely your prerogative of how you want to play the game. Um, but yeah, you could lame here, um, but I, you know, obviously I wouldn't recommend doing that. 
Uh, here I tried to pick off the weak or the non-loomed villager from building a house wall, but um, you know he reacted pretty swiftly to that. So uh, good on him. Um, one thing I'll definitely say. Oh, so we're gonna send our 17 through 19 population onto food, and here I think I actually go 20 population, which is fine as well. It's just you kind of got to read the map and um, you know just how much can you afford to uh, you know lose or um, how much can you afford to uh, delay your actual rush here? Here, I actually didn't have a problem with actually going 20 population, so um, I just waited. And uh, I think, you know, maybe I should have gone 19 population here, but like, again, this is your, your prerogative there on how quickly you think you need to hit your enemy. Um, so we're going to go 20 population here. And um, after we... Uh, get like a saturation onto the boar and you know not enough villagers can crowd around it We're gonna send the extra villagers onto sheep and then we're gonna research loom So the boar is gonna expire here and when everything expires We're gonna have around 500 food and we'll be good to go to the next age We're gonna send two of the injured uh, Stone or two of the injured villagers from lowering the boar over to stone and we're actually gonna actually so one of the reasons why we want to do that is we don't want to send them forward and we also um you know, don't really care um, about any type of uh, aggression from our opponent because the likelihood of that happening is pretty low and we can just wall in our stone villagers there. So we're not too concerned about any, uh, any aggression and um, it just makes the most sense there. Um, here I made a, a really grave mistake by, you know, slaughtering two sheep, number one, and, oh, and also double clicking. Oh God, that was absolutely terrible. And um, so after, you know, just don't make those mistakes. You're going to send around eight villagers, or nine villagers, or ten villagers forward. Really up to you. But at least keep a couple more from your uh, food gathering and put them onto wood. And the reason why you want to run four on wood is you want to have enough wood to build that blacksmith. And you also want a house as well as um, you know enough to build a tower. So there's going to be an initial you know wood injection that you'll need when you reach feudal age there. And you just want to be ready for it. So, you know, we're going to march forward and we are going to not die to the town center. We're just going to keep scouting around just like we are here. It looks like our opponent is going for some type of drush, um, some type of uh, drush fast castle. So this is a pretty ideal situation. Now we've reached feudal age. We're going to build our blacksmith and we're just going to try and beat the walls there. Now all of your uh, villagers from this point on are going to go onto food or berries. And once those get saturated, send them over to wood. Now we see that he's walled here, so we're actually going to build a tower on this side of the wall so he can't repair or build behind it. And then we're going to, you know, start knocking down his barracks. Now, uh, Leroy actually does end up winning this game, and um, that is because he's a fantastic player. Uh, he's around 1,700, and myself, I believe at the time of playing this video, or playing this game, I was around 1,500, or uh, 1,550, and I was just playing really sloppy. Here he goes for the drush, but doesn't matter our wood villagers are going to be safe and we don't have to really worry about that and soon enough the drush won't be strong enough to actually do damage to our villagers because we're going to get our upgrades so uh we're going to knock down this wall here and or knock down this barracks rather and we're going to find our way in now he can try and repair but it's just not going to happen we have our tower there and um so the reason why i chose this video even though i lost is i think the build itself went really well and I think that the aggression itself went really well. I just got really greedy and I just didn't know really where to go next with my transition. So on those, or for those reasons, I ended up losing the game. But I would say that, you know, uh, doing um, the build as it's shown here would, would actually be fine. Uh, one of the things that I don't do in this, uh, in this particular, uh, in, or in this particular build is I don't actually research wheelbarrow as quickly as maybe I, sh I should have. Um, and wheelbarrow is, is pretty strong, right? Because with wheelbarrow, you can actually chase down villagers faster and, um, you know, pursue them if they try to micro away from you. Now here we can see we are really annihilating our enemies here or our enemy villagers. And he knocks down the tower, but that's perfectly fine, right? Because we've slaughtered three, four, and then make this five. Oh, no, nope, we don't get that one. So we slaughter four villagers of his. We lose none of our own, or actually we lose one of our own rather. Now we have five villagers of his. 
this rush is already worth it. Honestly, I could walk back right now and, you know, this would be a, a perfect transition. You know, six villagers and we can get a seventh here maybe. And this would be what I would consider a successful trush right now. And that's where I would kind of stop it, right? Like maybe you can go knock down the barracks again and build a tower there and just be super, super annoying. Um, I feel like we've won the game for the most part. Um, but, you know, here, like I said, I get greedy and um, my villager micro is pretty terrible and just all sorts of things. But we're going to continue to be disruptive in this space and we're going to try the best that I can to do so. And, you know, kill another villager. And as you can see, like these Incan villagers are just really really strong, really annoying, just an absolute pain in the butt. But that being said, um, there's not, not much else to show for this video. Um, I believe the build is at this point complete and uh, was done to some, you know, some degree of success. And I think that this is good, uh, a good show, uh, showcase of kind of how strong that initial push can be. Here, it's just me making a bunch of mistakes and I kind of don't want to, you know, uh, highlight those mistakes for um, anyone trying to, you know, follow the build after this. But what I would suggest is behind this, you need to be building farms. Behind this, you need to be building economy at home. Um, or, you know, if you're going to commit to this fully, then you need to send even more villagers forward, be even more aggressive, and really just get on top of your enemy. But um, with that being said, that's all for this build. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a really terrible time making this video, but I think it was uh, worth it to kind of showcase, um, you know, some of the dangers of playing against income players and what you can expect to play against them. So um, let me know what you guys think about this series down in the comments. I'm hoping to cover Huang in the uh, next infamous build here, but um, that's entirely up to you guys as to what you guys would want to see. But that being said, uh, we're signing out at this point, and check out Discord in the description below, and uh, have a great rest of your day. See you in the next video. Bye.